Hi everyone, it's Amanda Lan from Proud Designs and Ainsbury Florist uh, and I'm with the Melton City Council Today Learning Directory um, which as you know they do several videos online of things that you can make at home. Um, so today we're going to be making uh, a pot arrangement. So whether you've got an old pot that you had a plant in that's died and you wanted to make something in that. Um, um, I've chosen this nice little gold pot that I did have a plant in that's now died, not really good with plants. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so we've got our pot so we get all our prep things ready. Um, you need a block of oasis probably nothing you can buy these in some of the cheaper shops otherwise go down to your local florist um, the Melton florist myself in Amesbury um, Karen in Bacchus Marsh they've got some beautiful lovely florists that you can get um, these little bits and pieces from that they're quite happy to sell you on the side um, so to start off we've got our pot we've got our oasis so we need to cut the oasis to go inside our pot so we can start building our arrangement so I tend to put the oasis on top of the pot so we get an indication of where I've got to cut and just with a knife so normally roughly about there a bit squeaky we cut that down the middle and then we just shove it down so it's quite soft so it will work in with your size pot that you've got just take off the little bits and pieces that are around the side and just push that down to the base of the pot and that's the view that we've got from the inside. Um, so the difference with Oasis when we're doing a pot is you, you can stick the flowers on different angles so you can get a little bit more of a design happening in your pot. Um, so you can soak this before in a bowl of water so once it's soaked up you can put it in. I tend to put them in dry and then just with a jug which I forgot my watering can today so we're actually using a bowl. Um, fill your pot up with water which will take quite a lot because the Oasis does soak up a good litre of water. So um, keep filling that up. So that's done with our water. So you'll get, um, the Oasis will just start to drink. I tend to poke a few holes in it so it goes right through the middle of the Oasis. So it's had a really good drink. So then we start off with, we prep our foliage first. So again, a bit like the bouquet in the mason jar, if you've seen those videos on previous weeks, we start off with our foliage first and then add our flowers last. So to start off with, um, I'm gonna try and do it so you can sort of see what I'm doing and me working from back to front, around the other way. Um, so I tend to um, do the front first with my medium type foliage. So again, just picking things out of the garden using what you've got. Again, stripping the leaves because we don't want any um, of the leaves in the water because it will uh, dirty the water up quicker and just placing it in like that. Um, again, you can use some taller things that go up the back and the best thing about the Oasis is it holds it in, in place. So if you bugger up and go, oh, it's a bit crooked, just pull it out and then put it back in again and arrange it to how you go. Um, I like to use lots of different foliages again because it just gives you a little bit more design so again you can have some sticking out the side and that's when I do arrangements where I get a lot of width in my pot so you can make them look a lot bigger um, with lots of foliage you don't need to spend a lot of money too on um, arrangements if you get lots of foliage and build them up and just poke it in as you go and if you put something in and go oh that one doesn't look quite right we can just cut off the bits that maybe don't look quite neat um, what else have we got here I did have some other gum here. Yep, so again, just stripping our leaves, cutting them to length. So sometimes I'll stick it next to the pot and go, okay, we'll cut it about that small. Um, we can cut off bits and pieces. Again, just poking them in, stripping the foliage. That just gives you a bit of an idea of how you can build your foliage. Then we've got this beautiful wattle here, I'm stripping our bases and placing it in to where we want to place them. So wattle's great at the moment because it's nice and bright. Um, and when you're doing a pot arrangement too, some people try not to just stick it in so it's just sitting at the top of the pot. I like to wedge it right down to at least to the base of the oasis. Again, people don't tend to fill their flowers up every couple of days. Some flowers drink more water than others. So I find if you can wedge the flowers everything you put in the pot as low as you can um, that will just make a, a longer lasting arrangement also so that one's probably a bit short now I've cut that one um, so again just cutting off your base of your foliage and just placing it in around the base I like to have some down quite low so it sort of falls down um, what else? I've got some more wattle so you can get a bit more height coming up again through maybe this side just poking that right down the bottom of the pot. Uh, we've got some of this lovely 
silvery grey foliage. So again, just poking it nice and low and giving you that sort of a look. I'm trying to get that straight as I can. It's a little bit wonky, but so we just keep going until we build a nice base. So those of you who are new to the Melton Learning Directory, they have a lot of really good videos on at the moment on how to make cheese and um, different cooking ideas. And I love it. I'm actually new to it. I've just learnt about it. Um, and I've actually learnt to make some really good things. So I hope you get some great ideas out of this arrangement and um, make some really good ideas. And please shoot me through on Facebook or Instagram and show me some of the things that you've made because I'd really love to see people having a go at some of these arrangements I've made through the directory. Um, I think it's a bit of fun and I love that people can have a go and make something themselves at home. And I really look forward to making the cheese that they made the other day. I haven't seen the video yet, but I love cheese. So to be able to make my own, that's pretty exciting. So again, that might be a little bit tall, so you might want to cut that down. Um, but I did find some of this um, in Bacchus Marsh the other day. So this is really quirky. It's like a little bit of a stick. So again, a nice little feature that you can put up the back. Pampas grass, if you're lucky enough to get a hold of some of that. Um, I know a lot of farms through, um, through Melton have them growing on their property, but little sticks and pampas grass, even using fake um, Things like I've got, uh, I used in the mason jar where I did some peacock feathers and you can put those coming up through. Um, so it's, it's good to work with some fake stuff as well as, as real things as well. So I think that's just about as good as we'll get. Maybe another piece through there. Um, so it's all, all about starting from the back and then coming in low as you build down to the front. So again, if some things just stick out a little bit too much, um, we can do those a little bit lower, but otherwise that's giving us a rough base of what we need to work with. So I'll clean up all this mess. Actually, I just really want to put one more piece of this one in there. Okay, so there's our base of our pot arrangement that we've got. I know I made that look really easy, um, but just take your time and, and stop and start the video and, and look at the process. So it's pretty much just building up the height, coming down medium and then coming down a little bit lower and just pushing your stems down as far as you go um, so it's drinking all the water at the bottom of the pot. So then we can work with our flowers. Um, again, in previous videos that you might have watched, um, I explained about using sets of threes. Um, it's just something that all florists do. It's just an odd, um, always odd flowers to create that effect. Um, so it just gives it a little bit more balance, I guess. So I'm gonna start again, um, probably at the top. So we might go with our tallest flowers, which is our leucodendrons. So I have three of these here. So again, it's putting it next to the pot to get an idea of what sort of height we want. So I'm probably gonna go with the tallest one I've got because we want to get back up there, maybe cutting it a little bit lower and placing that so we're getting a bit more height to go with our foliage. So we start there, then I probably want to put one a little bit lower than the other flower. So again, just putting it next to the pot, getting an idea where to cut it and then going there. And putting it on a bit of an angle I think works well than having them all standing up straight. That's the best thing about the Oasis. Again, you can sort of do clusters, so have all the flat type of flower on one side. Um, I tend to like that a lot, but some people you can just put them everywhere and just all have them mixed up a bit like a bouquet. But I'm gonna show you, I'm a little bit more structured and like mine, a little bit more of a, a corporate sort of feel. Um, so that's our look with our first three flowers. So we've got the leucodendrons. Now I did have some proteins, but I don't know what I've done with them. So, oh, there they are, they're hiding at the front. So we could put a couple of proteas in there and get more of a bit of a native finish. So again, maybe one about that height. So I think maybe about there. If you poke it in and you think it's not quite right, just pull it back out, give it a bit more of a cut and then put it in. Oh, I've got one more of these guys. So proteas, if we do the native arrangements quite good because they actually dry out and you can keep them forever. So that's always quite nice to get something that lasts forever. So the third one, Second one, I should say, I can't count. We'd probably put in the middle here. So again, pushing it way down into the oasis. That gives us a little bit of look at where we're at so far. What else we've got? Oh, the kale. I love the kale at the moment. It's coming in a huge range of colours and it's a really good long lasting flower. It's a bit like cabbage. It smells a bit like cabbage too. So I like to do these down a little bit lower. 
are probably about down there. You can open these up. Um, what else have we got to use that would work well? Um, maybe some crizzy. So again, if you've got a stem of a flower, again, taking all the foliage off, and you get these little longer ones, you know, cut them down and use them singly. So you can poke these in different spots. I'm just cutting all the excess off. And again, I think maybe over this side, we might place these. I'm just poking them in, shoving them all the way to the bottom. And then a couple through here. And then one more through here. I'm trying to work with how, how's that working. Um, what else can we go with? Maybe a couple of roses or maybe some LA lilies. So these are quite closed at the moment. So these were picked fresh yesterday. And we're going to place these in here as well. Now, keeping in mind, these are going to open up into a big bloom. So we're going to think when we put these in that they're facing the right way as well. So I think maybe off to the side. I'm just going to, again, stripping the base of all the flowers, the foliage. And then we place that one in there. Okay, so again, just having a little bit of a tweak, seeing where we're at with height and width. Um, you can add some more foliage in as we go just to add a bit more. So that's where we're at at the moment. If you break a stem, you could always cut it quite short and then put it down quite low so we don't waste that. So we could do that. Um, maybe we could put in there maybe some roses as well. Just a double check. Maybe a couple more. So again, if we've got a set of three, we've got three leucodendrons, but we could add another couple more if we just wanted a little bit more pops of that red to maybe come through the middle. But again, with the roses, we just cut down, obviously, all the thorns, depending which farmer I get them off. Sometimes they keep them on, sometimes they're off. Again, just stripping the base. You can just use a knife and do this or just cutting them off. So again, we've got no foliage in the water. And then any petals, you do get a bit of bruising as you go around the outside. So we just peel those off. So we make them look all pretty again. And then we whack those in there. Again, just positioning where we want to place that. I've found a gap. So it's pretty much looking for the gaps to fill where we can put the roses. And then we've got one more, which we might do up a little bit higher. So I've measured that against the pot to where I want to roughly put that. And we're going to put that one in there. So again, getting that sort of a build of look. And then just keep standing back and having a look and just filling the gaps of where you think you might want to put them. Um, again, I'm sort of clustering them in um, sets of three. So I'm going to put that one in there. So we've got sort of like a little bit of a, a design going on now and you can see how they're all placed. I think I'm going to add a couple more leucodendrons just to fill a couple of the gaps. And I do like leucodendrons. I'm a bit of a fan of natives. So again, just look for some gaps that we can place these in. And so you're starting to get a bit of a full base of the flowers now that we're adding. And the best thing is they just poke into the oasis nice and nice and easy, but it gives you the structure that keeps them in place so they don't move. Um, and it gives you the idea that you can place them up or stick them out sideways. So that's just about done. I think it needs something maybe down here. So whether we go for another piece of kale maybe, another little feature flower. So cut that down low, make sure there's no foliage at the base. Um, and we'll place that in this little gap here. There you go, it's giving you a bit of an idea how we're building. So I would probably put some more foliage up through here as well. Um, you get If you've got beautiful ferns or monsteria leaves in your garden, they look quite nice to come out on the base to put underneath which I actually forgot to bring some of those today. Um, but that's pretty much your pot arrangement. So just with your pot and your oasis and your flowers. Um, again, you can decorate the pots with um, a bit of hessian if your pot's a little bit older looking. This is a, a quite a new one, but you can add bits of hessian. Um, you can add bits of ribbon around the base. Um, so you can decorate it to how you want to work. But that's pretty much it. I've also got... Um, this stuff, leaf shine, it's great. So it's like a hairspray for flowers. So once you, um, it's good for foliage, I wouldn't go putting it on your flowers, but it just shines everything up and makes it look nice and clean and bright. 
So another thing you can do, just a, a watering can. It's always good just to spray because I think it's when I uh, do flowers and before I gift them out, I always give them a really good spray because that looks quite nice as well. Um, and then you can also get um, different sprays in different colours. So you can spray roses black or blue if you're into that sort of thing and want to get a little bit creative. Um, but pretty much that's how you do a standard pot arrangement. And you can do that in little pots, big pots, tall, small, uh, with fake or real flowers. Okay, so that was our pot arrangement. I hope you enjoyed the video on how to make an arrangement with using our Oasis in a pot. Um, again, I've just finished it with a little bit of ribbon, which looks quite nice to just finish off the base. Um, so for any more of my videos, if you'd like to watch, um, have a look on the, uh, the learning directory page through Melton uh, City Council. They have lots of ideas and some of my other videos on how to make things. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely gift to give to someone and it's something that I will be starting up is um, home flowers. So this is something that you can have in your house every week, whether it's weekly, fortnightly or monthly. So check out my Proud Designs uh, website for having in-house uh, flowers uh, delivered like this all the time. So thanks guys, enjoy the videos.